What's going on everybody, Jay Hayes here. So today I'm gonna be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. A lot of hype around this, well, not so much a lot of hype, just a lot of people are saying, you know, hey, you gotta get this device, you gotta get this dripper, everybody's talking about it. Now, normally I don't like gold plated decks, right? And I'm always like, why don't they do silver plating? Why don't they do silver plating? If you haven't watched the video before where I broke this down, whether something is gold plated or silver plated, micro, nano millimeters, thickness it's not it's not really going to matter whether it's copper gold especially with now you don't really have a lot of going to competitions and trying to blow up vapes and do all this crazy shit with the reason why i think a lot of people like gold plated decks is not so much because of the look of it they think that it's going to function better than that of a stainless steel deck or a copper deck when in reality that is not true at all whether or not you have a stainless steel deck that is copper plated or a copper plated deck that is silver plated it's not really going to make much of a difference i'm not saying that there's not going to be a difference it's going to be so negligible you're not going to notice the difference this is probably the first dripper that i've ever seen that is in fact silver plated and taken apart you better get your big boy pants on you better go out to the tool shed go grab some tools because you have to assemble this thing as it's all apart i can't say i've ever seen a dripper that's literally in pieces and it'd be a good thing you know what i mean like if something is usually taken apart it's it's probably broken i don't know if this is broken yet because I haven't put it together so we're gonna put this together we're gonna have let's set up a campfire let's get some whiskey and rums sit down and we're gonna assemble this dripper together you and me and the rest of the world we're gonna try to figure this out keep in mind though if you do not know how a dripper is assembled okay probably look up videos not just mine as to how you're going to assemble this device because insulators are key. The screw positioning is key. A lot of the pieces you're gonna see in this don't look very good. So let's put this together. I don't really wanna get into too much of what a conspiracy is. I think by now you guys know what that is. So when I was saying this thing comes apart, literally the whole dripper assembly is all apart. From the posts, to the insulators, to the drip tip, to the deck everything is apart. This is silver plated and I guess this is why you don't see a lot of silver plating because this looks really really cheap. I'm sure from where you're at right now looking at this it looks good but it feels really really cheap. So that's the deck. I think this bag here with the drip tip in it is going to be all of the products to assemble it as these are just extra peripherals, extra screw. You got a squonk pin in there. And of course we are gonna be utilizing this with a squonk pin. Lots of, wow, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's not even O-rings on this dripper. 510 pin there, we're gonna take that off. And that is 24 karat gold plated, that pin. So we're gonna take the, uh, the squonk pin that comes in the extra bag. I mean, at least they put all the pieces to put it together in one bag. I don't know why a company would sell a device like this where it's all literally in pieces. I, I don't understand the idea behind it. Yeah, there's literally no o-ring. So let's try this. This fat one is gonna go into the actual top cap. These are actually really fairly easy to put in. Here we go, that's one. Now you have to put one on the top cap on the side, which I'd assume is probably this one, the fatter one. It's like that, and then this is gonna go in there like so. This is aluminum, by the way, very, very, very light. Little insulator, that's gonna go in here like so, just like that. This is the post. This piece right here is the insulator that's gonna go around the 510, like that. And then you're gonna screw this into the bottom. This, you're gonna flip around like this, put the insulator in, and there are no screws in the post as well. Basically, I have to put everything together on this dripper. There you go, so the posts are assembled. Feels a little bit better just because there's a little bit more weight to it. Then of course your O-rings are gonna add that extra gram to it. So there's one O-ring. Very difficult to see the actual slits as to where the O-ring goes. There's one, and then there's a second one there. So yeah, everything in the one bag with the drip tip is gonna be to assemble this product. So that is all assembled. Squonk 
long pin is in. Clearly, this is going to be your positive block. This is your negative. This is silver, so it may corrode over time. Well, it's not a matter of may. It's a matter of when. Silver's not going to hold up too well, especially as thin as the silver is on this deck itself. The airflow that is on this top cap is really high set. If you're not experienced and you're going to buy this stripper and you have to assemble it like you saw me do there, just keep in mind to really play back, rewind what I did just to assemble this all as one piece. You really do not want to jack up the insulators, especially if you're going to use something like a mech mod and you forgot to put the insulator in at the bottom where the 510 is. You just have to be careful when building this. This is the most important part really is this insulator here and then this insulator here. Easy to assemble, it's nothing difficult. Again, if this is the first stripper you're gonna get, then I could tell you without even bringing it on the top, I do not recommend this to be a first stripper as you do have to put all of this together. And I just wonder how much money they really saved themselves not putting it together. So that's the deck, squonk pin in the center. A little bit, uh, a little bit of a different scenario here, kind of a top loading coils. And then your drip tip, which is really ugly. Very, very, I hate thick 810 drip tips like this. They're just entirely too thick. It's very channeled. The spot for the O-ring that is on this drip tip, this 810, is basically the spot that's in this right here, which is going to go just like this. Done. It does have their company engraving on the side of the Ultim. It's just, I, I really do not like drip tips like this where they're really thick. That reminds me of like a miniature lifesaver. If you got an orange or lemon lifesaver and sucked on it for two hours, that's what that looks like, what would be left over of that lifesaver that was originally a lot larger. Or a gummy lifesaver, something of that nature. Any kind of candy really that's orange or yellow. A jujube. No, that doesn't look anything like a Juju B now, does it? So that's it. That's everything. Let me put a build in this. I'll show you the build, show you how I wick it, and then we'll bring it on the top. All right, guys. So basically, this is what we are working with. Here we go. So, you know, due to the fact of how much I like the Dead Rabbit. With the Dead Rabbit, a lot of people were concerned with, because the wicks were so long, how long it was gonna take for the juice to travel up to the wicks and the coil. Well, with this, this is not much different. It kind of has that same type of situation. Now, you could see that the clearance between the deck and the actual coil here is, guys, I'm not even joking, that's maybe a quarter of a millimeter. It's really, really close. I'm trying to do it to alleviate as much as throw as possible. And of course I do have this on a squonk and the build I'm working with is a dual 26 core with 38 on the outside. You see the coils are preheated, ready to go. I'm going to show you now how this is going to squonk without the cap on. Well, squonk's pretty good. Still waiting here. There we go. Let's see how much we can wick. It's obviously, we, we just know by now that I have created this thing where I try to force it to leak by filling it up as much as we possibly can. So this is a lost vape bottle inside the Rebel 167 Squonker. Let's go ahead and give this a humongous pulse of juice. And that is my finger all the way in. Mm. Using a lot of juice up here. Do it again, all the way in. Let me show you. So sideways, here we go. We're gonna do this all the way in. Just holding it. Just trying to saturate those wicks and get any kind of leaking at all possible. Waiting for the suction back. Oh, that's the actual juice you see in there. So we're not getting any leaking, but I could tell you that this is not that far up. I'm just there, yeah, it was a bubble. So the problem that I, you're gonna have with my juice trying to get it to leak is because it's so thick and so viscous, it's not going to leak very well. The thing is though, when I'm doing this, I'm really trying to get it to leak. The way that this airflow is on here, it's a little higher than most, but it's still low enough to where if you do over squonk, it is gonna leak out. And you can see that these coils are fully juiced up and ready to go. That is a 0 0.20 build at 79 watts, not to 167, 86, there we go. It's a big girl. Ooh wee. 
squonkers. And of course, we are gonna be utilizing everything stock with this. Oh, there's some leakage. Leave it up to me to get the leakage. People are gonna say, I don't know how to squonk. You guys just, you guys aren't understanding the idea behind me doing these reviews. I, I just think that people are like, oh, Jay, you're trying to find problems. I'm just trying to show you in the worst case scenario if you how hard it is to get this to leak and, you know, and with all squonkers. With drippers, I don't really do that because, you know, you know how much to drip versus a squonk, every dripper is gonna be different. Every 510 is gonna be different. 0.20 at 86 watts. So here we are back on top of the Conspiracy RDA sitting on top of the Rebel 167 and we're working with about 79 watts, give or take. That is a 0.28 build. Point, it's fluctuating between 0.20 and 0.28. The name of this company reminds me that of a Chinese company. 3F Vape, 3FC4 Vape, Heaven's Gifts, 3C Vape. So it's pretty damn close to what the other websites are. Not really too sure whether or not this is in fact made in America. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people think it is in fact made in America, but um, I can't find the validity in that anywhere. That's not saying that it's a bad dripper, I just don't know if it's truly American made. So let me show you some of the vape reduction I'm working with, fully wide open at a 0.26 build. Point, so got 0.26 to 0.28, just kind of fluctuating. <sighs> Wow, yeah, that's, oh shit, that's it, that hits. So here's the deal with the dripper. The only difference between this and the next dripper is the actual post configuration as there are two blocks on the side. I wouldn't say it's anything special. What I do find special with this is that vape is still coming up. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Okay, so what is really special with this is the fact that it is in fact silver plated. That's pretty badass, it is. The problem you see with silver plating on like a dripper or a mod is it's gonna get dirty really, really fast. Think about sterling silver. No one really wears it anymore and they wear stainless steel just because it gets super, super filthy. And then the problem you also have with it being silver and having your juice in that dripper sitting for weeks on end, we've all done this. We've all, you know, done a build and said, I don't like this dripper, put it up and it still had a little bit of juice in it. You're not going to tell me you clean every single dripper that you put back on your shelf because you are lying through your nostrils. There is no way that you clean every single dripper. And that's where the silver plating is gonna come in. Because silver plating does oxidize faster and corrode faster than that of gold, you gotta be careful with this. Eh, look, I like stainless steel decks. I have gotten used to gold plated. As much as I hate gold plated decks, I just kind of gotten used to it. But a lot of gold plated decks, what you'll find is when you run them through the cleaner that the plating will come off. I haven't ran this through the cleaner extensively to find out whether or not this is in fact going to come off. I just know that silver plating is not the best option. And when this thing all is apart, it feels very light. But obviously once you put the screws under the post, it has a little bit more weight to it. I don't know what the base is. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's copper. I don't feel that it's stainless steel. I'm not quite sure as to what the deck is made out of. Probably should have like scratch tested it. It's a decent dripper. Again, guys, listen, I, I'm just getting so sick of all these same ash drippers coming out with a different post configuration. Someone could argue, someone's gonna argue and say that, you know, what more else could you come up with a dripper that makes it any different? And the answer to that question is, it's just like an invention. I know people can use this argument that everything is a clone of a clone of a clone of a clone, but the argument I have, if you were to invent those earbuds that hear what someone else is speaking and that translate to your native language and ins inside of your eardrum, and then you hear it in your language, we would all be millionaires. Just because something is not out there and people think that there's no way to redesign a dripper, you're very, very wrong. There's very many things that we could do to improve the drippers and where they're at. This is not a horrible dripper, but if I was to rate this dripper on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it like a 5.5, and that's really, really pushing it. It's not a bad dripper. Um, I don't know how many times I have to say that. If I'm giving something a rating of five or six, it's a decent dripper. It's not horrible. I'm just not the guy that's going to give something like this a seven. Very few drippers. For instance, the Comet. Oh my god. Even a follow-up of this Comet RDA or RSA. I would say eight, 8.5. I absolutely love 
this RDA. It is one of, if not the best RDA I've ever used. Did a lovely review on them, and I don't even know if I rated it as high. I may have, but I can tell you that I've been using this probably two and a half weeks, non-stop, every single day, beautiful dripper. And it being an aluminum top cap is going to dissipate heat a whole lot faster. The biggest turnoff I have with this that's giving it that five rating is the fact that you have to assemble this product. Now they do mention it, no matter where you buy it, that it needs to be assembled. But why is it not assembled already? It's gonna require less packaging because everything is all built and put together versus having 17 different Ziploc baggies making you feel like a crack dealer, open this up, get all these different little pieces out and then assemble it. And then I guess you could look at it and be like, oh, I accomplished something because I assembled the dripper today. It makes you feel good that you've actually built something that you're using. Then you go into my coils which is how I feel when I build my coils, versus using all generic coils that you could buy. It feels nice knowing that I built the coils that are in 5, 5.5 is where I would go with this. So I know a lot of people like this dripper. I know this dripper is out. A lot of people are raving about it. It's just you need to assemble it, and it's silver-plated. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jay, you